that there was just as much fucking going on then as now. Only now, it has a more perverted quality. You know. Now, there's no love whatever included, you know. Then there was your heart, a bit of heart in it. Greenwich Village was there, and New York was around it. And the rest of New York did not act the way Greenwich Village did, exactly. It was sort of a center of dissent, and had been for a long time in American life. People from all over the country came there. And they were regarded as bohemians. Their ways of life were irregular. Their way they dressed, and certainly the way they thought, was outside the mainstream of American life. And as I recollected, marriage was not important in Greenwich Village. I remember hearing a line Jack said to somebody he was trying to lure into bed. And she was being very coy, and he said, aren't you pagan enough? No. Hello, uh, Jack? No one is arguing with your unalienable right to go to jail, Emma. All I'm saying is that this is not the right time to go to jail for birth control. Only the right time to go to jail for birth control. The masses is governing conscience now. Soon you'll be indistinguishable from the New York Times. Emma, all I'm saying is that you are too valuable to the anti-war movement. You're wrong. No, he's right. If we get into this war, they're going to be you're thousands. wrong. Will you let me finish my sentence? The sentence is not worth finishing. Thousands of American women overworked, underfed, is dying, giving birth to anemic children that can't last out of the year. Are their lives any less valuable than thousands of American boys? E. I want those back to I'm not day. saying that. Do you think... Oh, shit. Exactly. Good night. You want some coffee? Jason Sanborn? Oh, I'm out of coffee. Again? I'm leaving. What, you too? We no, the conversation is over. You're a journalist, Jack. When you're revolutionary, we'll discuss priorities, hopefully over coffee. It's late. I'll walk you home. Why? I won't hear you. Oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's Friday night. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Really, I'm, I'm so glad to see you. Um. Uh. Oh, I finished your articles. They're very good. Uh, the railroad piece, I think, is... Needs polishing. It's repetitious, but... Uh, but that's deliberate. I'm using repetition to make a point. I don't want it to seem too polished. Oh. <laughs> well, I think you're going to love New York. Emma, Emma, Emma. I think it was Emma Goldberg. I think so. I never forgot Emma Goldman. She inspired me to the very depths. And Max Eastman was a beloved man. A real radical. A free spirit. He was in that same group with that Emma Goldman. That was her name, Goldman, not Goldberg. Floyd Dell was one of them. He wrote novels, beautiful novels. The radicals included people like the IWWs and Bill Haywood. And there were Walter Lippmann and Lincoln Steffens and Isadora Duncan and Edna St. Vincent Millay, Alfred Steiglitz, oh, and Margaret Sanger. My Lord, I picketed for her. Now, about Davis and Sloan, have they quit? Mm, not yet, but they... <laughs> Organization, the IW... Look, what does a capitalist do? Let me ask you that, Mike. Huh? Tell me. I mean, what does he make besides money? I don't know what he makes. The workers do all the work, don't they? Well, what if they got organized? I mean all the workers, not just the plumbers and the carpenters and the goddamn cigar makers, but all of them, all over the world, not in just one country or another. Give them a beer, will you? 
What if they all got organized? Don't you think they could they could change society overnight? They could make it anything they wanted. Can I tap you for five dollars a slot? Well, don't ask this pretentious son of a bitch for money. If you need five dollars, I'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah, four fifty. What isn't fair? What is Dan? If all the workers in the world belonged to one big union, Listen. there wouldn't be a war, are you, would there? Are you listening to me? I mean, it's Brian. British, German, and the rest of the world. You've been nursing that beer for an hour. Can I get you a glass of wine? Oh, no, thank you. I'm fine. Thank you, anyway. Beer's fine. You are an amiable person. And a very good painter, I hear. I write. <laughs> Read Angles, read oh Marx. God, you can't Jung interpret Freud in economic context. Jack, you know you got a taxi waiting? You and Jung is a mess. Do you seriously oh, believe you are you are you are No. How long are they going to stay? I don't know. They'll get out in a while. Honey, I'm only gone for a day. I just got back from Boston. Hey, why don't you come with me to Baltimore? Oh, really? When am I supposed to come to Baltimore, Ask? What, Ask? Jack, you know you got a taxi waiting. Taxi's waiting, Jack. Uh, <laughs> see you tomorrow. Here, here. We've been damn trying for the two you want for. It's what capitalists say? can take this country into war anytime they Wait. damn well please. The only impact you can make is in the streets. Yes, of course, you can yes, make but, them in, but... But, don't, but don't you think, Emma, that if Debs gets a lot of votes, it'll strengthen that impact? No, I don't. I think voting is the opium of the masses in this country. Every four years, you're dead in the pain. Yeah, but... Don't you think... I just made it very clear what I think, Miss Bryant. Oh, come on, E.G., don't be so goddamn dogmatic. Louise has a point. She says... Suddenly, I'm dogmatic. Why does my status change every time you get a new woman, Jack? Uh, Barney, could I have the red wine? Louise, would you like... Well, she's just, uh, she's upset with me. It's got nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with you, girl. Thank you. It's a great comfort. The house is completely filled with people when you're gone. They used it as if it was a meeting hall or something. I can't get any work done. Just throw them out. How am I supposed to throw them out? Just take them out, throw them out. I'm not going to leave. Say to Max Eastman, leave. Just throw them out. Jack, is that you? Yes, yeah, Jack. It's very good to see you. Hi, oh, Art. Very good to see you. Oh, I am. Hi, Art. Yeah. Good to you see know, you. You know Louise Bryant? Yes, hi, Horace. How, how are you? Very nice to see you. Very nice. How do you do? Thank you. Great pleasure. Hi, Max. How are you? Hi, Horace. Hey, Floyd, good to see you. Hello, Horace. Still getting arrested, Jack? <laughs> I tried. <laughs> how about you, uh, Miss Bryant? Are you trying to get arrested, too? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> You guys know what happened to you. What, uh, what do you do, Miss Bryant? I write. You write? Mm-hmm. Well, now, may I ask, what are you working on? It's impossible to describe. It's impossible to describe? She just did a hell of a piece on the influence of the Armory Show, and you ought to read it. Well, you know, I very much would like to read that. Oh. Why don't you give me a call at, uh, at Metropolitan? In fact, even better, why don't we have a drink on Thursday? Okay. We can talk about the armory show yeah, and breakfast. Yes, of course. It's a date then. Well, all right. Oh, that's wonderful. Fine. Jack? Oh. All right. Oh, Jack. <laughs> Very well, now you stay out of the slammer now, OK? Oh. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, goodbye, Good goodbye. Nice to see you. Jack, please don't do that. What? She's the editor of Metropolitan. I've known him for years. Jack, well, I can speak for myself. Yeah. So can you work? I don't want Tax to do that. Tax is waiting, Jack. No, oh, Tax is waiting, Jack. <laughs> Sort of flash. Jack? I'll see you at the end of the week, okay?